Hi, Josh. I'm Ariana. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? Pretty good. So I read this really interesting fact about you on the internet is that you have a degree in like stage lighting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does that ever come to play? Because like these are being filmed. Was that something you kind of considered when you're filming your stand up specials? Um, only slightly, because luckily I've, I've been able to work with lighting designers that are much more talented than I was when I was studying it. So I still lead on their expertise. But every once in a while, I'll, you know, maybe ask them about color or something. But I'm not really <laughs> contributing more than that. Yeah. What I actually found interesting about the stand up special was the coloring that it's like in an interview format or kind of talking to a therapist and a viewer doesn't know that until it switches the black and white and you're like wait what's going on because it's a very seam seamless integration why did you decide to take that approach of it also being like a therapy session um well basically we we chose the match cuts because it would it would like you said marry the two ideas as best as possible and then we chose um the the theme because i was talking to the director jacob Menachi. i reached out to him some time ago and was talking to him about what i wanted to do with the special and how i felt about um how i got to the jokes and everything and and you know through through therapy you see the the beginning of the theme and and the idea and that's sort of representative of how when i went i didn't know how i felt about it or i didn't know what to think uh, and then you see it end up on stage because that's where it did end up, where eventually I made jokes of these things and and was able to move past them in a way that I was able to give it to strangers, you know? Yeah. So would you say that therapy has become like an important part of you being a comedian and kind of creating your jokes in your comedic role? Um, not not so much as as uh, creating jokes and everything, but definitely as a as a resource that I know is there for when I am trying to process something that, that goes beyond, you know, family, friends, and just, you know, personal development or anything. And I think that it, it knowing to keep these two things separate, that, that um, stand up isn't necessarily, you know, the catch all for therapy and that, and that therapy is not this place where you have to guard yourself with the jokes and stuff like that is, is probably one of the main takeaways that I had both in, in the process before uh, starting the special and, you know, now after it, looking back, the, the things being distinct, but serving the same purpose is, is why I went with it the way that I did. Yeah. Speaking of the special there, it's heavy, but also not like you talk about losing your father, but then it's, I didn't really expect it to come. It's like a circle back to. Oh yeah. Yeah. Being on the bus. Yeah. <laughs> like how are you able to come up with that? Just as a viewer, I'm just like, how could you go through hopefully probably one of the most traumatic experience of your life and connect it to actually another traumatic experience in your life yeah i mean i think that some of it is just through time you know like like if you spend enough time thinking about something and and doing your best to process how you feel about it you end up gaining that uh type of perspective that feels unique and that you you can lend to any art form whether you're painting you're writing music you're directing or you're you know writing a film it, it all comes from a similar place of uh, now that I've thought about this a lot, what's the best way to share it with people, you know? Yes, yes. So when creating a stand-up special that is going to be recorded, how often do you perform it in public before, okay, this is going to be the recorded version that's kind of going to live on forever? Um, it definitely depends. It depends on every person. It depends on what you have available to you. So I was lucky enough to get some uh, weekends at clubs to sort of run everything all together before I actually shot it. And I'm super appreciative of that. That was that was huge uh, because I think that it made me it helped me realize that everything was going to come together the night of. But 
you know, sometimes you are living in New York and maybe you can do several spots a night, but they're all 15 minutes long. So then you have to parcel out what you're going to do at which show and how seriously you want to take how the last thing went and stuff. So it's different for every person, but as much practice as possible is never a bad thing. Yeah. And knowing that a stand-up special is going to be recorded, does that kind of affect what jokes you're going to tell? Do you think you're more risky or a bit more cautious in any way? No, I think that by the time it's being recorded, you're ideally in a place where you're happy with the whole set as it is. So you pretty much do it the way that you expect the people at home to enjoy it as much as the people there. Yes. So you also, how did you come up with the title of Up Here Killing Myself? Um, I think it was, it was, you know, meant to be this sort of uh, play on words and this sort of double meaning of, of I'm hopefully, you know, like killing it in, in the sense that everyone's enjoying the thing. But I think that also there was a, there was an aspect of, searching for things and and um a way that i was feeling that was sort of slowly killing me whether i recognized it or not and all of it really came together through this this marrying of um you know seeking help and doing comedy yeah so obviously as a comic you talk about your life which includes the people in your life and your family how has kind of been the feedback on that? Because you're kind of giving a point of view. Some of it is a point of view when you were a child and an adult now. Like, how has been the feedback from your family? Uh, not I haven't heard yet because it came out today. Oh. So I'll I look forward to yeah what they think. Yeah. <laughs> well, how did you even decide to be a comic? Do you like remember a point in time that you're just like okay? this is how I'm going to process and kind of go through life. And this will be my career. Uh, Honestly, right before I moved to Chicago. So it it wasn't really, I always loved comedians. I loved comedy ever since I was little and I loved jokes and everything. Jokes were, you know, my favorite, but it wasn't until graduating from college and moving to Chicago that I decided to really give it a shot as far as working on becoming a comedian. Um, I think that for the most part, you know, I didn't know if it would become a job or if it would be my sole source of income or anything. You know, I, I went into comedy definitely, um, still working, you know, my job at the grocery store and, and just doing shows at night, taking every day by day. So I think that for me, you know, this has all been a blessing and some of it was a surprise. And now I'm, I'm just trying to take the opportunity and run with it, you know? Yeah. How do you kind of prepare before you go on stage to be on stage? And then after, how do you kind of come down from that high of being on stage? Uh, I mean, prepare is probably just, you know, really knowing what I want to talk about, thinking about what I want to talk about way beforehand so that I'm not scrambling right before I get up there. Coming down is not, I'm not as good at like, if you, you know, especially when you have a great show and you're just wired, it's like, I will just end up staying up unless I'm exhausted. Like if if I'm really, really tired, like if I flew in that day and did the show, then I, I think I can just crash, but yeah, it's, it's very hard to come down in a sense. Um, so I'm, I'm still learning. I don't know. I don't even know if I do come down. I'm not going to lie. Well, that could be a good or bad thing, but yeah. I, I definitely can see that perspective. So life on the road, I'm sure is a bit challenging at times. Is there something or some things that you kind of always have around when you're doing tours? Um, you know, when I'm, when I'm touring, I mostly tour with the co-host of my podcast uh because i do the josh johnson show every thursday and then logan nielsen who's a uh co-host of it usually comes out with me to do my shows and everything um so then hanging out with him and stuff or if nothing else i'll try to find an art museum and i'll go to a museum and that's always nice that's always a good uh way to appreciate art that's not just watching other comedy and stuff 
And so I do as much of that as I can. So there's little things I do here and there that I feel like help to make it more entertaining and not as because some some of it's about being lonely and some of it's about being bored. So if I'm, you know, with uh, with people and I'm doing things that I enjoy that only that city offers, you, it's hard to be either one, you know? Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Congrats on this special. I hope to talk about future projects and I hope your family receives it well. We'll see what the next <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for chatting with me and everything. And um, if you want to check out any of my upcoming dates, you can just go to joshjohnsoncomedy.com. I'll be touring the rest of the year. Awesome. Congrats again. Thank you.